I joined the Calgary Fire Department Honor Guard because I was one of the founding members. After uh, Lloyd Dutnell died in September 1970, uh, his funeral, we attended the funeral and uh, the guys didn't know whether to turn left or right or would come to attention and Dennis and I, Dennis McIver and I discussed the situation on our way back to number 13 station. And uh, we thought it would be good to have a, an honor guard for the fire department. Uh, we thought about it, we talked about it, and finally we sent a letter off to the chief of the day to uh, put forward our proposal. Uh, the chief forwarded the letter to Captain Al Sinoski and he basically said, not in my lifetime will there be an honor guard on the fire department. Well, it was only a few months after that that the Fire Chiefs Convention was announced for Calgary and the chief went to Captain Sanofsky and said, there will be an honor guard and thus was born the Calgary Fire Department Honor Guard. And uh, it's been going relatively strong ever since. We had some weak moments when we didn't have too many members, but uh, fortitude and uh, desire have prevailed and uh, we're at the point where we're at today with a just a fantastic guard and uh, it goes back to uh, history being we were probably the first fire department honor guard in the country and it's really nice to see them going as strong as they are today. We always seem to have a core of about six people and there was just enough activity going on with uh, ladies' night and uh, civic functions and uh, funerals that uh, we managed to keep six to eight of us fairly well involved with the Honor Guard. Uh, it got a little discouraging at times. Uh, we were called paid uh, pallbearers. Uh, we were... Uh, given a bad time about asking for time off to practice and, and do these functions and you know, one thing or another. But like I say, the perseverance of the, of the members was, uh, was there and we didn't let things like that bother us. And uh, it, so it's growing into uh, quite a well-recognized unit of the fire department. Can you tell me about a particular event that was very memorable to you personally? Uh, the most outstanding one would be the Morley James funeral. Uh, Morley was killed in a fire and uh, it was the first official fire death that the Honor Guard was involved in. I was no longer in the Honor Guard at the time. I had moved over and had joined Local 255. But to see that guard out in front of that uh, pumper carrying the casket going down Glenmore Trail uh, was just a really inspiring and emotional event. Uh, the guys just looked super sharp and it, it brought the fire department to a, a whole different level for the day. Uh, it was so, just so professional to see it uh, done the way it was done. And consequently, uh, there were other departments have formed their own honor guards since that, but like I said before, I'm sure we were the first fire department honor guard in Canada. Uh, speaking of the history of the, the fire department honor guard, uh, I believe it was 1978, there was a couple of firefighters killed in Edmonton. We decided to go up and represent the Calgary Fire Department as an honor guard. The chief of the day said, there's no way you can take department vehicles outside the city. Well, guess what? We did. There was two vans of us and there was approximately 12 to 14 of us went to Edmonton for the firefighters funeral up there. We showed up at the fire hall, their number one fire hall, took our gear, went inside and changed, came outside and formed up outside in formation and everybody looked at us like they'd never seen anything like it before. In fact, the Edmonton Fire Department turned around and said, we're following these guys. 
that. So it was a very proud moment as well for, the, for our honor guard to do something outside the city and be recognized for it. Tell me about that time uh, that uh, it was after the, it was like there's like a, a, a bunch of uh, pipers from all around the world. Right, okay. Tell me that story. Okay. Uh, that was the second Chiefs convention and uh, it was held downtown and we had done our opening ceremonies for the Chiefs convention. That would have been 1980 or 1981. Uh, at the same time, there was a competition going on in Calgary of pipes and drums uh, units from all around the world. They were from England and Scotland and Australia and New Zealand and uh, United States. And after our uh, ceremonies at the convention center, a bunch of us went down to Moata Armories to have a few drinks. Well, of course, all these pipes and drums are just doing their own thing down there. We spent a lot of time down there enjoying the music and the uh, competition between the uh, groups. And for some reason, I decided we should go back down to the convention center, see how the Chiefs convention was going. So there was a couple of pipers and a drummer and myself. We went back down to the convention. We walked in and it was like dead, like a funeral. It was absolutely, nobody was dancing or anything. It was just really, really quiet. Well, the pipers and the drummer went through there and everybody got up and started clapping and hooting and hollering and it really brought the place alive. And the next day, the girl that had been running the convention, Darlene, she'd come up to me and she says, Brian, I don't know what gave you that idea, but it sure made a world of difference. So it was a fun thing to do, but it was a spur of the moment thing. And, uh, you know, firefighters, that's what we do. Silly things at the right time. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, I'd just like to add, uh, thank you for this opportunity to explain uh, the history, for us to explain the history of the Honor Guard. And as I said before, I would really like to thank the members that have continued the uh, history and, and kept the honor going. It's at uh, a far higher standard than what we were at. And it, it's great to be part of that legacy.